Good morning, church. Welcome, welcome on the second Sunday of Easter, in which we continue to live in the joy of the risen Lord in our lives. We welcome you in person, live streaming, or perhaps watching the service later in a recorded way on this April 7th, this first Sunday of April 2024. So as we come into this time of worship at North Olmsted United Methodist, I encourage you in call and response in the welcome and passing of the peace. The grace and peace of the risen Christ be with you. Many activities and joy and faithfulness and ministries and missions in the life of the church, by example, with the insert on your bulletin, encourage you to look at details with our UMM hosting dinner and Sunday school series. We have yoga activities, so much variety in the church, adult Bible study. On the back, I ask you to pay particular attention to our UWF plant sale. The deadline for orders is next Sunday. So I encourage you to support uh, that ministry in this budding time of spring. Again, details, I encourage you in our hosting work with a fundraiser to support our outreach ministry with Nehemiah Mission. Details there, particularly note the Sunday, April 21st gathering with music and food, not only with our congregation, but with fellow area churches. An active week with meetings this week, I encourage you to be praying and supporting in those activities in the life of the church. So as we do come into this time of worship, I encourage you to center your hearts, your minds, and your spirits as we listen to the prelude. Good morning. Good morning, and a happy uh, Laugh at the Devil Sunday to all of you. If you would rise, if you're able, for the responsive call to worship. How shall we live when shadows gather? What has written has been revealed. We all were together in all creation. Let us worship God, who is our light and our salvation. Will you join me in the unison prayer? God of abundance, we thank you for the beauty all around us. Weave us together in a life full of goodness and joy. Help us to move in harmony with one another and with all creation. Let us travel your path toward the release of your presence. 
Amen. Our reading is from 1 John. We declare to you that what from the beginning that we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and revealed to us. We declare to you that we have seen and heard so that you also may be in fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do, do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he has himself in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and who will forgive our, us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have no sin, then we, uh, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but that if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is atoned the sacrifice of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Our opening hymn, number 57, O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. As we do come to this time of prayer, I direct you to the prayer list at the back of the bulletin and encourage you on this Sunday morning in this time of worship to be praying for all these people, not only this morning and their concerns, their joys, transitions in life with all types of matters, reach out to them in love, care, prayers, and support 
in this next week. I do want to offer a joy that we have a birthday listed for this week, Zurich Bernard. So we lift Zurich in our prayers and joy for his birthday. Also have received these prayer requests. We received and sent out by email this week with our email prayer list. We learned that Dave Russell's mother, Dorothy, passed away. Her immediate family were able to be with her. Please keep the family in your prayers. Also, we've been asked to pray for Swessler Titus and his wife, Kathy. Keep them in your prayers. Swessler is the father in intensive care. We pray for you, Tammy. We pray for the immediate extended family. Please let us know how we can support you uh, during this time. Also, we have a prayer, prayers for Janice, for David, and is it Patty? Yes. Thanks for cards, prayers. Please continue prayers for Janice. We're glad to see you this morning. There you are. Welcome. You're up and at it. A lot of new people with you. Yes. We're really excited to see that. Please continue prayers for Janice, recovering from a fractured kneecap. Also, Patty, an aunt with long-term Alzheimer's, recently broke her hip, and prayers for peaceful passing. That's a lot going on in your life right now, so we pray for you and for your aunt. Did I receive all the prayer request cards for this morning? Welcome all to come into worship. We are glad that you are here. We welcome all family, friends, and guests. Welcome to our time of worship as we are in joy with one another, as we worship God in Christ and the Holy Spirit. Welcome. Please be in centering silence as we come to God in prayer. Lord God, we are in praise, we are in joy for the eternal gift of risen life, the risen Christ in our lives. As we live in this Easter season, we are thankful for the power that that gives us to sustain and grow through you and to do great things in your name. Through the risen Christ, there are no boundaries, there are no limitations, there is nothing that we can't do through you as individuals, collectively as your church, in our neighbors, in our, with our country and as our world. We understand that not all have heard that message or received it, and so Lord God, help us to pass on that joy and the glory of that message that people might have hope and promise through you. For that which is evil in our world, Lord God, help us to overcome it by words and actions of goodness, again, that give people hope and promise. We pray for war-torn areas in our world in which people are looking for food, are looking for shelter, looking for hope, looking for places of worship and freedom to do so in your name. Work with all of us, dear Lord, that we might do miracles through you. Lord God, we know there are times in our lives in which we sin, in which we fall, and we feel distant with you. But we understand through our faith the reality that you are a redeeming, merciful, and forgiving God. And through your grace, and again through the risen Lord, that we are forgiven. We thank you for that steadfastness in our lives. Lord God, we are a people of faith. And one of the ways we do that in our tradition is to confess through the ancients' prayers of confession. And so I invite you now to stand and join me in the Nicene Creed, which is number 880 in your hymnals and the words before you, and stand also for the Lord's Prayer. Let us join together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray all this as Jesus taught his disciples and teaches us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us from evil. <laughs> wow, okay. Sometimes Roth uh, catches up to you. That's why we're in the community. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing together. by Gordon Young, directed by Gabriella, accompanied by Javier.
Glory, hallelujah, joy. Thank you, choir. Thank you so much. Through our faithfulness with God's gifts to us and then giving back to God everything that we have received. We have received gifts as people have come in this morning, the offering plates just as you come into the sanctuary. Encourage if you have not given and supported the missions and ministries of the church because of God creates that opportunity for us to do so, I encourage you to give so that we might be blessed with God in our ministries. Let us pray for the gifts that have been received and will continue to be received. Gracious God, we thank you for the love, the joy, the creation within each of us because we are truly made in your image to love and to serve for everything that we are and for every way that we are becoming through you. We ask that we do things according to your will for the many gifts that you have given, even the financial gifts of our lives. We give these financial gifts back to you that they would be blessed for powerful ministries of mercy, for love and compassion. We ask all of this through your Son, the risen Lord. Amen. Now let us enjoy special music, and we're going to hear four hands again on the piano. Wonderful. Let us enjoy. So I won't embarrass you too much, but you both do team so well together in more ways than one. So thank you, one of the, the glorious examples of that that you share with us through your playing and music. So thank you so much for the gift this morning. It's very appropriate on this second Sunday of Easter to offer these familiar words, but I hope that you hear them in new ways from the Gospel of John where we live into the hope and promise revealed to Jesus' resurrection, his appearance to the disciples. Think about as you hear the scripture how Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, is active, present, and visible in our lives. Hear these good words from John 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in our next hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, United Methodist Hymnal number 420, and the words before you. I believe there are many inviting messages that truly make a difference in people's lives. Simple words or phrases like hello with a gentle smile, an authentic smile and presence with the other, or as you're approaching a door and you're there first to open it and say to the other one just immediately behind you, after you, or Going a little deeper, we may sense that 
you want to lean into another inviting message to say, how are you? With someone you know well or that you're just coming to know. They are important messages in our interactions with one another as human beings, as people of faith, as we offer them and receive them. At the very basic level, these kinds of greetings, those three greetings, by example, hello, how are you, and after you, indicate that we care, that we care about the other person. There are other inviting messages that do go a bit deeper depending on what we might be sensing or observing in our interactions with others. Phrases like, can I help you? I sense that you may need help. Can you talk with me about that? Is there something that I can do? And then gracefully allow that person to respond as to what they're comfortable with. Or simply saying, which so many people need to hear in our world, I'm here for you. All of these phrases potentially give one another assurance that we are not alone. We are not alone in matters of life and faith, and that there is a way when sometimes it feels like there is no way with whatever we've dealt with the previous day or week or right now or we're anticipating and people feeling hopeless, we offer hope with these phrases that there is a way one step at a time, even in the most difficult and challenging matters. Several years ago, the Saturday Evening Post ran a cartoon showing a man about to be rescued after he had spent a long time shipwrecked on a tiny, deserted island. The sailor in charge of the rescue team stepped onto the beach and handed the man a stack of newspapers. Compliments of the captain, the sailor said. He would like you to glance, kind of skim through, or maybe even read in detail some of the headlines to see if you'd still like to be rescued. <laughs> well, I hope that he was bold. I hope that he was courageous. And he stepped out of his fears and uncertainties to accept the opportunity to be rescued, even with that lack of knowledge of what for certain he might encounter when he returned to the mainland. Sometimes the headlines do scare us, do they not? Sometimes we feel, I do sometimes, that evil is winning over goodness. Then Easter comes along to remind us that there is no grave deep enough, no seal imposing enough, no stone heavy enough, no evil strong enough to keep Christ in the grave. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, and that is the message for us to be reminded of as Easter people, that we can be rescued over and over again from our fears and worries. The disciples individually and collectively needed to hear and see a message of hope and rescue after the death of Jesus, when they had not yet experienced the promise come true of Jesus' resurrection. And so I like this retelling. I want to share it with you this morning of the scripture from John 20, verses 19 through 31, of what happened with Jesus and the disciples after the resurrection. The words which I believe will be reassuring for you a reassuring message for all of us, are from a daily devotion that I enjoy from the upper room disciplines. Kind of a hand in hand that we have with the upper room devotionals in the back. This past week, the featured author Theodore Hybert wrote later in the week these words. Our story today goes back to the very beginning of the community that would become the church. Only 10 followers of Jesus are present. Judas was betrayed, had betrayed Jesus to the authorities and is no longer with them, and Thomas is absent. It is the night of the resurrection, though the disciples have only heard what has happened from Mary. Understandably, 
They are all behind closed doors, locked off from the world, fearful, afraid to come out of hiding, endangered, uncertain, directionless. Their prospects don't look good. Frankly, they look disastrous. This is the perilous beginning of the community that would become the church. Their teacher and mentor has just been convicted of subversive speech, has been executed by a dishonorable crucifixion, and has been buried. They wonder whether anything will be next. Their future looks darker than dark. Then against all odds, that same Jesus is in the room with them. And Jesus gives them new life. This is the gospel of John's most important story about the resilience of, here it is for us, and I believe we live it, encourage that we continue to do that with one another, the resilience of caring communities. These first 10 followers of Jesus stuck together when they were under the gravest of threats, facing their end and the end of their community. They didn't abandon one another. They were, on the other hand, really, really looking for and received life through Jesus' appearance. They were overjoyed, and this is the true meaning of the resurrection, the author says, when the future of a community of Jesus' followers seems humanly lost, the risen Jesus reappears among them over and over and makes hope possible again. Many early Christian communities doing the best they could but facing life-threatening forces, saw themselves in this story. It gave them the strength to go on. It happened once at the very beginning, and it can happen again. Caring communities rely on something and someone, capital S, bigger than themselves. In my response to the author's words, I would like to offer this, that we have, through this writing and sharing, received good messages of hope that through the Spirit of God and our risen Lord, we can carry on. We can rise up with anything we may face because resurrection life will sustain and empower each one of us and the church community to do great things in the face of any difficulty or challenge. And when you doubt that, or you feel hopeless about that, go to a trusted friend and share, and lean on their hope, and know again that we are in this together to rise up and be hopeful Easter people. You will, we will, we can do this by receiving and offering the inviting, enduring messages that the first disciples experienced and passed on to others? And what were those hopeful, life-giving messages? From Jesus, three times in the passage, peace be with you. And in one of those times to remind them that the origin of that peace is from his Father, our Father, as the Father has sent me to offer this peace, so I send you. And how? Receiving, breathing out, it says, receiving the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit for the disciples, for you and me, and living that in our interactions with one another in the power of forgiveness, that if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven, not by our power and design, but through God and the risen Christ. From the disciples to Thomas, in joy and excitement. Thomas, you weren't there, but believe, we have seen the Lord. How have you seen the Lord? Signs of it in your world, with all your senses, with all your spirit, sometimes in indescribable ways in matters of life and death and life again. That's God and the risen Lord in your midst. Share those stories with one another. But yet, from Jesus to Thomas and his doubting, he needs a little bit more. Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. 
and not in scorn or shaming, but in grace and encouragement and support. Do not doubt, but believe. We all have doubts. And if we didn't, I would be wondering if we're really seeking to grow in our faith. We all have doubts, as Thomas did. Questioning and the discovering as we bring those doubts to God and community and fellowship with one another, we discover the really revealing ways in which Jesus, the risen Lord, appears with us through one another so that we might believe, that we might grow in our belief. This is a promising message with what Thomas and what others experience. And Thomas does get it. He needs it a little bit more. And what does he do? He doesn't just sit on his hands. He offers an exaltation to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Not in vain, but in exaltation and honor and reverence, my Lord and my God. You are with me. How do you exclaim those in, in exaltation, those experiences in your life when God and Christ reveals himself to you? And in your own way, say, my Lord and my God, thank you. And we read that Jesus did many other signs, an inviting and encouraging and enduring message so that you, the disciples, us, may come to believe over and over again that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Do you believe it? Do you share it? That inviting message with others, a message that endures for all people for all time, giving them hope. There are many ways in our world in which we can receive inviting and encouraging messages that do challenge us in friendly ways, I believe, to live the message, to share the message of the risen Lord for ourselves, for others, the church, for those who have yet to hear from us or who have yet to come to believe in the joy and faith of the risen Christ. One of the ways we receive the message is through the beauties and miracles of nature. And so I offer this brief video message, The Road Beyond Easter, from Tommy Woodward with the Skit Guys. Enjoy the video. This tree is over 300 feet tall, estimated to be at least 600 years old. And that's nothing. There are trees towering over this forest that were just seedlings when Christ was walking on the earth. How deep do you think the roots are on a tree like this? 100 feet, 1,000 feet? The truth is a tree this tall can't grow roots deep enough to support itself. That is why redwoods have intertwining roots. They support one another. These trees literally do for each other what they can't do alone. I think Jesus demonstrated that same mindset for us that we're all in this together, supporting one another. I mean, think about it. He never just passed somebody by leaving them stuck. Jesus was constantly intertwining his life with those he came in contact with. He called people out of obscurity to join him in his journey of changing the world. He healed a blind man with mud. He restored a chronically ill outcast with merely the hem of his garment. He renewed one woman's hope for second chances and, and reminded a Pharisee of his need for mercy instead of morality. Jesus' ministry was constantly intertwined with people, connecting with them on the most intimate levels and changing their lives forever. Jesus called his followers to love people the way that he loved them, to bring health to the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, touch the untouchables, and as you have been treated generously, so live generously. And that call hasn't expired. Yeah, 
his charge to the church is just as clear today as ever. Therefore, may we be rooted in Christ, intertwined with one another, so that we may continue his mission. So I invite you now to receive the message of love and joy of our risen Lord as we partake of the bread and cup through the sacrament of Holy Communion intertwined deeply rooted with one another together through the love of God, the presence of Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to follow the liturgy with the insert on your bulletin and with the choral responses on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in singing this unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my new blood of the covenant. 
poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Christian faith and through our history in these very moments as United Methodists that the sacrament of Christ's table is open to all. All are welcome to receive the bread and the cup, the gifts of God for the people of God. I want to remind you that as we receive the bread and the tracer pass, for those of you that are sensitive to gluten, there are center areas to receive the gluten-free bread. Would the ushers please come forward?
This is the body of Christ, broken, given for you. Take, eat, and be made whole. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all sins. Take, drink, and be forgiven. Let us now stand and join together in our closing hymn, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, number 384 in the words before you.
Love will come to perfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear because our relation to this world is just like Christ. There is no fear in love, for perfect love drives out fear. Shine the light of your love upon us, O God, and reveal the goodness of creation. Our salvation is bound together with creation. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the postlude.